Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and through this series of programs, we try to shine the Community Foundation Spotlight on nonprofit organizations that are making a real difference in our community. Uh, my guest today is Jim Freeman, and Jim is the executive director of Second Wind Incorporated. And we're going to learn a little bit about Second Wind. Uh, and uh, actually talk a little bit about the treatment processes for folks who are dealing with alcohol and drug dependencies. Jim, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very Pleasure much. Pleasure to have you involved. Let's start off with what is Second Wind Incorporated? Second Wind is a halfway house for men in recovery. We have seven beds and we uh, primarily take folks from inpatient treatment. Uh, that way they have had some treatment, they have stopped using, and um, they're now have, a, have made the choice to enter recovery and, um, and learn to live in, in society on life's terms, uh, which is a challenge if mm -hmm. you've been living in a drug world forever. Um, that makes, uh, we're not a place to come to get clean, mm -hmm. we're a place to learn to live clean, and that's a big difference in my mm -hmm. book. So, now, what the, the the folks are with you? They they live at Second Winds. It's a housing mm -hmm. setup. We have uh, at least five hours of treatment a week, uh, discussions, topics, um, uh, life skills, uh, recovery topics, and things. Plus, we have a large group where each week a guy can uh, share what's going on with him, uh, how life's going for him, what he's trying to do, get involved with. Um, it's the groups are wonderful because, uh, for instance, we had a guy who um, has been using heroin for 23 years. Mm. He was doing $300 a day for the last three or four years, and uh, he would he would you know stand up in group and say, "Man, I got to use. I'm going nuts," and uh, that everyone would come together and support him. And he's he's asking for help and he's accepting the help. Mm -hmm. And we actually did a group hug one day just to, you know, just to show we're in it with you, you know? And uh, he's done great. Probably he's, some feedback that his, uh, he's not often gotten. No, in <laughs> fact, historically left to our own devices we pick up. Mm -hmm. So living in a group facility, you have, you have a chance. You have a, you got people that want to help you. You have um, a place to go that is safe because there should not be any drugs or alcohol in the facility. And there's management that's there to be of service to you. Mm -hmm. so it's really pretty neat. Uh, we, we are very fortunate uh, because we have a cook that comes in, Miss Edith. She's been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so you eat well. We eat very well. Not so she bad. She cooks dinner Monday through Friday. And so the guys that come home from work don't have to fix dinner. On the weekends, they're on their own. Uh, you know, everyone's on their own, but there's plenty of food. It's not always everything you want, but there's something mm -hmm. to eat there. And they usually will cook themselves. Often you'll see two or three guys get together, make a breakfast or a dinner or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunate, just before I came, we were donated 100 pizzas. Wonderful. Yeah, so that's a big deal for us. Wow. So, a uh, very pretty neat place. Uh, we have uh, high speed internet, we have a computer. We have a nice cable TV. Uh, you know, it's a nice, warm, inviting place. It's not fancy. It's uh, old, but it's clean. The guys mm -hmm. are responsible. They each have a task, and they're expected to do it every day. And part of that is maintenance of the house, uh, and keep the outside looking nice and the inside looking mm -hmm. nice. So. How long has Second Wind been in existence? Well, we're celebrating our 40th year this year. It was incorporated in 1971, and there were the, uh, the Alcohol and Drug Abuse Administration, well, I think at the time it was the Alcohol Administration, was really push, getting a push towards treatment at the time. Uh, I think Hudson Center had been open for mm -hmm. a number of years at that point, but was not, you know, it wasn't old by any chance. But the guys would come out of Hudson, for instance, and they needed some. They needed another step because they were just going back to their old environment, mm -hmm. which historically is what almost everyone tries to do, but they relapse because that's not to anybody's advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's hard enough to get clean in the perfect situation, but when you're hanging out with your old friends and all those old expectations are there, 
it's really hard. Mm -hmm. So a, a fellow named Jim Mallory and Dr. William uh, Fritz, who happened to live next door to our current location, which is at 309 Newton Street, not the best of neighborhoods, but it's cleaning up quite a mm -hmm. bit. And uh, Judge Lloyd Hot Dog Simpkins mm -hmm. uh, was instrumental in Somerset in County coming together <laughs> and, and incorporating it as a private nonprofit. And of course, there was the NIMBY issue, and not in my backyard, mm -hmm. but Dr. Uh, Fritz went door to door, canvassing the neighborhood, saying, look, they're going to be right next door to me. This is a good thing. You're going to help these guys out. And these guys are going to be good citizens by living in this house. So it went. It happened. So, and you've uh, been there for 40 years now. 40 years so. in that same location. So pretty, uh, pretty solid there, yeah. I'd say. Now, how long have you been with Second Wind? Um, I would guess about two and a half years. Okay. So it's uh, been a challenge. Uh, it's, you know, it's only seven guys, so that's the glory. That's the easy part. But it's, it's amazing what seven mm -hmm. guys in recovery can come up with and need and troubles they get into. <laughs> and, and, of course, you're feeding yeah. these guys, and so you have to have the food. Uh, you know, we have challenges right now. Our, we've been uh, turned away from the food bank. Maryland Food Bank because we have a small state grant mm. and so they said if you know we were buying purchased I'm sorry donated food and they say you can't buy donated food from us because you have this grant well the grant doesn't cover all the food mm -hmm. so uh, we've been having some challenges coming up with meat because we were buying our meat from there mm -hmm. so we're always on the lookout for good deals uh, donations of meat and food our daily bread has been useful, uh, very nice to us, delivering mm -hmm. breads and some pastries and cakes mm -hmm. and things like that, which is... So it certainly sounds like there's some opportunity for corporate sponsorship there of, uh, you know, maybe you, you grocery stores, if they're pulling stuff off the shelf, Absolutely. it's still... I think they, they certainly pull stuff off the shelf, and it's still good for, days, for, yeah. for, for a while. That's right. Opportunity for that to come to That's an right. organization like we yours. We appreciate that when that happens. Sure. We've had deer... Uh, donated to us, and uh, DNR has a nice program where some of the um, meat packers, like, like meat preparers, mm -hmm. will cut the deer mm -hmm. and make hamburger and give it to us without any charge. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty nice thing, and we've had some pretty good manwich with the deer mm -hmm. or uh, things like or stew. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the guys eat a lot of different things. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, how, does, how does second win fit in the, the total continuum of treatment for somebody? You know, it could be somebody watching who has a family member, has a sure. drug or alcohol issue. Uh, you know, where, where do they start to get help for something like that? Usually something happens. Uh, I always looked at it as you get this little box and you have clues. And you start putting the clues in. And somewhere along the line, they add up to, okay, I got a problem. I need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Where do you go? Um, depending on your insurance and your payment av availability and things like that, the first place would probably be to go to a local inpatient facility. Right here in Salisbury, we have Hudson Health Services. There's Warwick Manor inpatient up uh, near Secretary, Secretary up that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they need detox, from primarily from alcohol or uh, opioids, they would have a detox protocol, then they would have treatment. And inpatient is a 28-day generally uh, type of program. To you help get it out of your system. It's out of your of system, but you also begin to, to learn. It's an educational process and also some behavioral uh, because there is some um, um, changes. There's some rules. You know, you'll get a task there. Uh, you have to be at this time at a certain time. If you miss it, then you get in trouble. If you miss it too much, you get put out. So you begin to see, okay, I have some responsibility that I have to do. You know, you're using heroin all the time. There's some that work and do fine on it, but there's most people, they don't. Alcoholics, mm -hmm. you know, once you start, once it's really bad, that's what you do. You go find it, you drink it, and you recover from it. That's pretty much your life. Uh, and then you try to avoid everybody trying to call you to help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your sense is, I need another drink. So uh, inpatient is a good spot. Then comes uh, the halfway house. They refer, in, in most of our cases, they refer folks to us um, for a six-month program is what, okay. what we offer. Um, 
And otherwise, they'll, they'll try and find some sort of recovery house to send these folks. Uh, the glory with us is we're very structured. Uh, you know, we are pretty caring. Other places, uh, it might, in theory, be a recovery house, which means nobody's using, but there's no treatment. Mm -hmm. There's no real supervision. You know, so no that's the way that a recovery house would be different from your program. From a halfway house. Halfway that's house. right. Okay. Um, and once they would come out of our house, we try and have them set up with housing. Housing's pretty tough t in today's market. There's no jobs. Uh, so most of these guys don't have a lot of money to go rent a nice place. The smaller places tend to be in the crack house uh, mm. arena, and uh, it's just really challenging. It's now, really are, challenging. are some of your residents able to maintain a job? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, these guys, these guys become real good citizens. Uh, they are caring. They appreciate what they've been given, this chance to, to enter recovery and stay in it. They have to work hard to stay in it. You know, you got to support your decision not to use, mm -hmm. which is a big change in thought you, process. You never really get over that. I mean, you're one, always at risk. You, you, I would think you're that. always at risk. Yeah. And if you pick up, then the addictive thought process kicks in. It's a brain disease. The addictive process kicks in, and next thing you know, you don't want to, but you say, "Well, one won't hurt." <laughs> And if you have the one, then within three weeks, you have a couple more. And with three weeks after that, you're back to it. Mm -hmm. Back to at least the level you start, you quit at. Mm -hmm. well, it's pretty mm -hmm. sad. I mean, it's mm -hmm. pretty, this is a serious disease. Yeah. It really is. Well, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very serious issue for our, our country, for our society, really. It's amazing. The, 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 the cost in, in human terms and in terms of health care and programs like yours and what have you is, is, is tremendous. But um, until we can totally eliminate the availability of gr drugs, we've got to be able to help folks who have who come under the, uh, in essence, victimized by it. Right. That's right. We'll never end that. Mm -hmm. But the problem is some people can use recreationally. Some people can have a nice drink after work and not have any problems with it. And it never leads to problems. But there's other people. They have a couple drinks you know, maybe over a longer period of time and the genetic piece kicks in, the brain starts changing, next thing you know, that's their main focus. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. Uh, they, they, the numbers are like 10 to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people. That is. That's a that lot is. of people and probably underestimated. Right. Yeah. You know? And the other, the other scary part is like six people are affected by each drinker. Well, now you've got more than half of the population of like Salisbury is affected by somebody's mm -hmm. dream. Sure, because it's family, extended family. It's it's, it's Worker, coworkers, coworkers, workers, boss, kids. Uh, yeah. Right, it, drunk drivers hitting somebody else. They're affected. Their whole family's affected. Oh, it's, yeah, it's tremendous severe. severe. So, well, you're watching Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of the Community Foundation of Eastern Shore. My guest today is Jim Freeman, and uh, we're talking about the uh, the second Second Wind Incorporate, which is a uh, halfway house. Uh, for, for men who are addressing the issue of drug and alcohol dependency here in, in Salisbury. Um, how, how did, how, you know, where does the support for Second Wind come from? I mean, how, how, do you, how do you pay your bills? Well, we're really fortunate in that we have a, a state grant. Okay. It's not large, but it's certainly enough uh, that's been keeping us um, alive, mm -hmm. let me say that. We also, uh, we're very fortunate to have that. We uh, also have a couple contracts. Uh, we're, we're, um, HANDS is a Worcester County program, homeless or never denied services. And uh, they will call us up and say, I have this guy who needs, some ha needs a halfway house. Mm -hmm. You know, he just came out of treatment um, and, and we're gonna pay for it. Uh, and that's, that helps mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, we have a VA contract and we also have, there's a new program in the state of Maryland called ATR, um, Access to Recovery, Access to Recovery. And there's a, we just signed a new contract for them. And the way our program works is if we have the beds open, we can bring one of these mm -hmm. contracts. And we have six state funded beds and then the extra bed. Mm -hmm. And historically we fill it with the hands, but mm -hmm. sometimes you don't get somebody's referring a, bed, mm -hmm. a uh, resident to you, so. 
Hey, you mentioned uh, VA contract. Uh, <laughs> don't want to paint with too broad a brush, but uh, drug and alcohol dependency, is, it, there, it's a disproportionately high number of veterans represented in that population, as I understand. My, my, the, the few guys I've had have been, say they go to the Army and become professional drinkers. You know, mm -hmm. It's like that bad. Uh, it really is. So um, we haven't had a lot of VA folks coming in, but um, there, the last one we had did great. He uh, found a job uh, right away doing drywall and um, uh, fixing up houses. He did terrific. I think he started working for sure, can. Mm -hmm. And um, he's moved into another recovery house following our program. He's really doing great. So great. it's good to see. Good to see that they have some support from the VA, which is helpful, uh, and they, of course, they have the medical benefits and such. So that makes mm -hmm. makes life easier for everybody. Some of our guys, probably most of our guys, come to us homeless. Uh, they get into inpatient and they come to us, and you, you know, you know, what's your address? You know, where you, well, that big tree out back is mm -hmm. where I've been living. You know, and there's I'm not kidding. We have a number of guys who lived in the woods. Um, and what a life, you know, their job is, is to go get booze uh, or drugs, get meat, and then come back and share it at the campfire mm -hmm. with the other campers. Uh, and they do this for years in, so, in some cases. Uh, so it's, it's really sad. So they mm -hmm. come into our program and all of a sudden they got someone cooking for them. They got a bed that's warm, sheets and blankets, there's heat, there's air conditioning. I mean, it's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty uh, oasis, as uh, one fella called it. It's like an oasis. And, 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 but only as long as they stay clean. Only as long as they stay clean. And, and you, you so share, my you hope is that I'm, I find guys that are motivated. Mm -hmm. Now, almost everyone tells me they're motivated. Sure. And I have picked some guys that weren't, admittedly. But you, you try and feel these guys out. You know, are you really want this or... Or are you just getting a free bed for a couple of weeks? Because that's really all it'll be. You know, you'll be out of here after that. Uh, kind of a challenge. Mm -hmm. But if they're motivated, they they go out and try and find work, or they volunteer. That's another thing. I, I get some guys with disabilities, mm -hmm. and they seem to be good guys, and they really want this this time because many of these guys have been in and out, in and out of out of a recovery program, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so some of them can't work. They have a bad shoulder, their leg's bad or something, but they can do things. They mm -hmm. just can't do the daily grind of working. So we try and set them up. And uh, we've used a number of places like uh, Holly Community Incorporated, HCI. Um, they've volunteered there, the VFW. Uh, many um, have gone to the um, Goodwill, mm -hmm. Salvation Army, and other places. Place like mm -hmm. that, we have one guy working with our daily bread mm -hmm. right now to help do deliveries. Uh, so that's pretty useful. But that also kind of helps tra transition them into the uh, the daily routine of a job, if you will, even though it's volunteer. Absolutely. And 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 maybe if they get to the point where they can can then actually hold down a job of some sort, it gives them a little bit of a reference. Absolutely. So, so and my experience has been if you if you volunteer at a place regularly and you do a good job which is key mm -hmm. you have a better shot of someone saying you know I think I'd like to hire you or mm -hmm. I have a friend who has a mm -hmm. has an opening right now and I I've been watching mm -hmm. you you're doing a good job mm -hmm. uh, so I think volunteer is very useful yeah. uh, I know you do because you're and well, we, whole, we, certainly try, on... we certainly try to promote volunteerism. Yeah. I mean, but and we, I do too. We, I... we hear those success stories uh, over and over again, uh, that, that volunteering for an organization has either led to a job someplace, that, if that organization or someplace else, right. uh, it, through networking or getting to know someone, showing that you have some skills and what have you. And, and there are a lot of unemployed people out there, and if, they sure. at, all, if, if at all possible, there's a tremendous benefit to them volunteering. It, 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 Absolutely. It, you know, if, if nothing else, when they go to apply for a job, if they can say, well, I haven't been employed, but I've been volunteering over there at Second Wind, it, it's sure a reference. That sure beats saying I haven't worked for the last yep. six months. It yes. beats saying I've been sitting home in front of the television or That's something right. like that. And you're that, right. They so. develop a, um, a schedule of getting up. They have mm -hmm. responsibility. They have to be somewhere. They know what they're supposed to mm -hmm. do. They 
get it done. And all mm -hmm. that's really useful, not just for second win and not just for that fellow, but also for the community. Yeah. If, if, if there's someone watching and they'd like to try to support your program in some way, you're a nonprofit, you're 501c3. That's right. Yeah, how can someone, uh, I mean, I'm sure if they wanted to make a contribution, you'd take I'd it. I'd be more than happy to take <laughs> you know, that. I, I, and I'll send them a thank, thank you note. <laughs> they can use it for uh, their, yeah. uh, their taxes. How would they get that to you? A um, couple ways. One would be to call me and I could tell them. Let's give them a phone and number. It's 410 749 8038. 410-749-8038. Mm -hmm. Another way on my website, uh, which I keep trying to improve, I have a donation piece, okay. uh, PayPal or, or credit cards, and our website is secondwindinc at, uh, I'm sorry, dot net, secondwindinc.net. Secondwindinc.net. All over and I'm case. sure our friends here at SPAC 14, they'll show that on the screen great. too. Great, that'll be great. So folks can, be can, great. Can, can jot it down. And they can send me an email, secondwindinc at verizon.net. Verizon.net, Try Very to good. keep it similar. Yeah. So. Now, are there, if there's somebody out there, they just like to think they might be, have some something they could contribute. You can obviously use food donations. Correct? Always use food. You can always use money. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. seven, because we have managers. We have eight, eight guys, nine guys all the time at the mm -hmm. house. So there's electricity and um, all those expenses mm -hmm. are there. Um, we're always in need of a, seems like a refrigerator. Okay. They just don't last mm -hmm. very long. We have a couple of them, but they just don't last. They start mm -hmm. leaking the water and you're like, oh, too much work. You mm -hmm. know? Um, so if, yeah. if somebody's in debt, they have something they think you might be able to use, they could give, give you a call. The other thing I continue to look for and have not found the right piece is I would love for these guys, I'd love for Second Wind to have a job that these guys come in and learn a skill, uh, produce a product, perhaps maybe a service, but a product, and then when they leave here, take that, if that knowledge or whatever and move mm -hmm. on to another kind of job or that same job mm -hmm. somewhere else. I mean, surely that's the dream of all these kind sure. of places, but that's certainly mine. Because you have guys, and it's challenging in this market right now to find a job, and if you can give them a skill that they would like to do and capable of doing, uh, it could benefit us, benefit the community, mm -hmm. and certainly the fellow. Uh, any, without naming names, any success stories you can share with us? We've, uh, well, there's, I've had quite a few. I've been really fortunate. Um, um, I'd say the... Uh, Penny folks go back to their families? And there are some, but I tell you, because they've been homeless, uh, you know, we, we have a family program mm -hmm. that doesn't get used very much mm -hmm. uh, because most of these guys are homeless. That means that they've already pushed their family away where mm -hmm. they've, they've hit them up for so much money and energy that the family just has to they said, do I'm a done. little tough love <laughs> yeah. and say, Look, you know, until you get your stuff together, we can't really be a service mm -hmm. to you anymore. So you don't really see. Now, I just got a new guy in who he wants his family to be a part. So I'm really excited about that piece. And I met his dad, and he's a really neat guy. Um, I think the uh, probably the biggest success story, well, not the biggest, but I have a lot. But uh, the one fella who was doing the $300, he, he is going through so much. He has been uh, undercover for so long, uh, using that much drugs, that he recently expressed um, feelings. Hmm. He never really used feelings before. Mm -hmm. He had a hard ass, uh, excuse my French, mm -hmm. demeanor, mm -hmm. which kept people away. And uh, he lost a brother, and it was a real heartache for him. Uh, but he didn't let him get to him. Mm -hmm. He had a dad that wouldn't let him share his feelings uh, growing up. Mm -hmm. Oh, men don't cry. You know. mm -hmm. So he, that's how he lived for, for years and years, 25, 30 years. And now, being clean, these feelings are coming out. And he's not very sure about how to deal with them. So we've, we've been doing a lot of talking about that. He'll go through these phases of change. Like he went through this phase of craving. And he would talk about it all the time. And I'd say, well, here's what you need to do. You're, do. you're on the right path. You're you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Just stay with it. You know, you're almost through it. And he would get through it. And it would be wonderful. 
And he goes through these things. Well, right now we're doing the feelings thing. And it's a lot, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a grown man with years and years of feelings. He's, uh, he's, he's a little estranged from his family. His, uh, he lost a wife that uh, left him because, mm -hmm. you know, he was using all the time. She didn't want to see him dead one day. Uh, he lost his brother, uh, lots of other issues involved. And finally, he's coming to grips with that. And one of the grips was that it's, it wasn't his fault. It's he has this addiction. And this addiction prevented him from doing things that he should have done or could have done better. And, and putting the blame on the addiction is okay. And is okay because that's, it changes the way the man is, mm -hmm. you know? Getting clean puts the man, gives the man the opportunity to come back to where mm -hmm. he should be. So that's what we try and do. We try and give them that opportunity uh, to get back to where they should have been. Well, Jim, we're, we're certainly you know, glad we have facilities like Second Wind here in the community. And, and it really is, uh, uh, you know, Second Wind's an interesting name for your facility, and it certainly is giving folks a, a second chance. I'm for, sure for some of them it's, it's more than just a second chance, but hopefully it's the one that makes a, right. makes a real difference. And we appreciate right. the work that you and your staff do. Um, yeah, and, and if there are folks out there watching who uh, have in their heart to reach out and support your work, we hope they'll, they'll get in touch and, and at least they'll know a little bit more about uh, how a halfway house works. And if they have any questions, they're more than welcome to call me or contact me, okay. and I'll be happy to help them out if I can. Great. Well, we appreciate Great. you coming in and sharing the story of, of Second Wind with us. Well, uh, thank you. Thank uh, you very much. You've been watching Community Foundation Spotlight. Uh, here on the on Pack 14, and through the the Community Foundation Spotlight series, we shine uh, the the spotlight on organizations that are making a real difference in our community. And uh, for those who are trying to recover from addictions of alcohol and drugs, Second Wind is certainly one of those programs uh, and facilities. And uh, we urge you to contact them. You can contact them at uh, Second Wind Inc. at Verizon.net. Uh, they're located at uh, 309 Newton Street here in Salisbury, or they have a website, secondwindinc.net, N-E-T. And, uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, keep in mind that uh, one way that any of us can make a difference is by volunteering, whether it's at programs like Second Wind or any of the other nonprofit organizations in the community. If you've ever thought about volunteering, check out the SHORECAN, that's S-H-O-R-E-C-A-N dot org website. Uh, and uh, that's a pro pro it's sponsored by the Community Foundation of uh, the Eastern Shore. It's an interactive website uh, that allows you to locate current volunteer opportunities. And I'm sure there's usually, any given time, there's over 100 volunteer opportunities listed there. And I'm sure there's something there that'll fit work for you. Uh, and we thank you for watching Community Foundation Spotlight here on PAC-14. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC-14? To get started, contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC-14 is a great way to connect with your community.